sheets, you're going to have to make everything larger so that it will shrink to fit the site. And one of the most important things you can do is determine the shrinkage of the clay that you're working with. Most architectural clay bodies shrink less than plastic throwing bodies, and you'll want to look for a clay that shrinks less than 10%, even down around 4 to 6%. So what I do is just take a sample and make sure that you use a sample that will be the same thickness as the clay you're working with. And I'm just going to make a 10 centimeter shrinkage bar. So I take a ruler and I just indicate where the centimeters are. And, and I like to indicate what clay it is that I'm using and the cone that I'll be firing it to and any other information that I need. So I take this 10 centimeter bar and I fire it to the same temperature that I'll be firing my project. Okay, once you've fired your test bar, you take it out of the kiln and you measure it. And I can see here that my 10 centimeter mark is now 9.2 centimeters. So that, if I subtract 9.2 from 10, that tells me that my clay has shrunk 0.8 centimeters or 8%. So I can, I like to just mark the shrinkage right on the test bar. And I can also write the date. I think it's important to test every batch of clay because the amount of water in your clay can vary, so shrinkage can actually vary. So now I know that my fired clay, fired at the temperature I'm going to fire at, shrinks 8%. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to figure out how to use your clay shrinkage, which is 8% in this case, to determine the wet or working size of the components for your project. There's some old wisdom that says, for every foot, you add an inch. Every six inches, you add a half an inch. And as it turns out, this works really well for clay that shrinks about 8%. So I could, if I knew I had to make a four foot long slab, I would know that for my wet or working clay slab, I would need to make it four feet plus four inches. The problem with this though is that you have to, you would have to do that calculation every time you made something. And every time you make a calculation, there's a chance for error. So I actually like to work with a shrink rule. And an easy way to make a shrink rule is simply to take a, make a 12 inch ruler on a computer or on paper and then enlarge it. And you can enlarge it on a copier or you can enlarge it on your computer. And what I'll do here to get a working shrink rule is I'll take my enlarged paper rule. I've laid down some painter's tape on a four foot long drywall square. And I'll just make a little V everywhere. There's an inch mark on the large, on the enlarged ruler. I just use a V because that helps me pinpoint exactly where my line will be. Then I take the speed square and I'll mark my inch increments on the tape. You know, the beauty of a shrink rule is you can pretend that you're working with the finished size of your clay. For example, Let's say I know that I need a, a piece of clay that needs to be 18 inches for its finished size. What I can do is simply find 18 inches on the shrink rule that I've made and make a mark there. In reality, this slab is actually 19 and 1 8 inches long. So the great thing about the shrink rule is I can think in terms of my finished size. The other wonderful thing is is that you can make a variety of shrink rules. If you work with different clays, you can make a shrink rule for every clay that you use or a different shrink rule for the different temperatures that you might be firing. It allows you to know the shrinkage of your clay and to have a ruler that's geared specifically for your clay at your firing temperature.
You can also mathematically calculate the wet or working size of a project. This comes in handy if you need to get an idea, if you're working with large pieces, if you need to get an idea of the overall size of the wet clay slabs or components. Now to do this, you're going to first express your clay shrinkage as a fraction of 100. 8% would be 0.08, for example, because our clay shrinks 8%. We mark 0.08. You subtract that number from 1. In this case, 1 minus 0.08 equals 0.92. If our column is going to be 48 inches tall, for example, we'll take that measurement, 48 inches, and divide by 0.92. 48 divided by 0.92 is 52.2 inches. So our wet clay work for that column will need to measure just over 52 inches in length to get a fired finished length of 48 inches.